uh, all the proof you need as the president's in Huntington, West Virginia, that trade will dominate where the markets go. Uh, as soon as we got word, I think about 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, almost two hours ago, that the president was optimistic that a deal could be struck with China or that he was more positive than certainly some of his economic advisors were on the matter. The Dow uh, kind of reversed what had been about a 250-point hit and halved it and then some by day's end. So obviously that's proof that the trade is something that the markets follow very closely. Uh, Melissa Armo is with us. we got Gary B. Smith and Charlie Gasparino. Melissa, that's a reminder, I guess, as if we needed it, that uh, resolving this trade thing is going to be a very, very big thing for Wall Street, isn't it? It's going to be huge. In fact, I think the market is built in possibly that this could carry into 2019. So let's say, for example, that it works out in November and a deal is reached. I think the market's really going to like that. I think the market's expecting it's not going to be resolved this year. And if it is, I think the market's going to have a big rally, like they call it a Christmas rally, into the close of 2018, which the market needs. We've sidelined most of the year. We've held the uptrend. We've had a lot of volatility, though. And October wasn't a good month for the market. Today, we tried to hold the gains and we couldn't do it because Apple bombed on earnings last night. Yeah, you know, I guess bomb was in the eye of the holder, but it wasn't what they thought it would be. But having said that, Gary Smith, is it your view now that technically the market is over the worst after it was an awful month of October, a rebound this week, but very tenuous. What do you make of it? Yeah, I, I would agree with the word tenuous. It looks to me like it's put in a bottom. A lot of people think, oh, well, you know, this uh, this bounce that we had is more of the quote unquote dead cat variety and we'll just sink down. Feels like the market's trying to find a, a bottom, though. And the more these good earnings came out, you know, despite Apple dropping on the news, the earnings were pretty darn spectacular. Yeah. So. I think if Trump, and I, I think he's playing the right cards, I would not uh, uh, be surprised to see more, hey, I think we got something with China going right into next week, uh, you know, right, maybe right before the election. That could really boost uh, the market, too. You're such a too. cynic. You're such a cynic. Um, Charlie, <laughs> uh, let me, help me with this in the relationship the president has with the Federal Reserve. Obviously, he thinks that they're, they're gung-ho to raise interest rates and risk uh, jinxing a good right. economic recovery. It's almost a gimme now that the Federal Reserve, given the strong employment news we had today, is going to do just that next month, uh, and it's probably going to trigger another <coughs> president response. What do you think? I think he should keep his mouth shut. I mean, among the dumber things that President Trump has done in the economy, he's done some smart things. I think some of the trade stuff is pretty pretty horrible. Uh, but among the really bad things is, is publicly jawboning the, the, the Fed chief. He's almost guaranteed. The minute you do something like that, you almost guarantee that you know the Fed can't rever uh, reverse track. And now they have complete cover, uh, even though the economy could be slowing a little bit because that last GDP print was lower than the, the, the quarter before. There was some probably signs in, in terms of business investment, but because because he went after the guy publicly, uh, Powell has to has to raise rates in December, and that could be a problem. Uh, I will say this. The one problem that I have with the trade stuff is that, you know, Donald Trump has never really decoupled the bad part of China trade from the good part. The bad part is them stealing our inte intellectual property. The good part is that we have access to their market, that we have access to a lot of people there, which we sell stuff to. He's never really decoupled that. So, I don't know how you can feel really confident about his trade policies now until he gets that kind of right. And, uh, you know, he may never get it right, which means we're in a protracted thing with, with the yeah. Chinese, which, believe it or not, is not good for our businesses. Yeah, it drags on a while. Well, let's say, um, let me just ask you a hypothetical. I know that everyone, the consensus is uh, Republicans hold on to the Senate, maybe pick up a couple of seats, but lose the House. Uh, what if that doesn't materialize? What if they, they hang on to the House and they hang on to the Senate? Then what? What do you think would happen to, with stuff? Oh, God. Well, here's my take on this. If we end up keeping the Republicans, if they keep the House and the Senate, then I think the market is going to have an extremely bullish next two years, 12 to 24 months, going into the next election cycle. Mm. If that we do not, if the Democrats win the House, 
I don't think there's any way they'd win the Senate. But if the Democrats two years. If the Demo well, if the Democrats win the House, let me finish, then I think the market's still going to remain bullish, but you could have more volatility, these up huge up days, yeah, huge know, down you're, days, you're, huge up days, huge down days. Yeah, but you know, you know, you're missing, there's a, a whole, there's a, there's a panoply of macroeconomic factors that will come in the next two years, <laughs> even if the, the Republicans keep the House and Senate, which I think will be good short term for the markets. But I mean, do the deficits rise? Do we keep, do we keep getting very wage bullish growth? in the market. I can't well, see well, how I, you can that, be bearish in the market. That's fine. That's fine. I don't know how you could predict two years out, because if you can. Because I'm reading the, I'm reading the price really? action. I'm well, reading then, the charts. Well then, well, then you'd be richer than Warren Buffett, if that was the case. Well, the, was I the asked case. her opinion. That's all it was, and she's free I'm to offer it. I'm mean, just saying so two years out. Me, then I'm all just calm now. I'm pretty good at what I do, yeah, though. Well, all right, and then Charlie's just being rude. But uh, <laughs> No, I'm kidding. But Gary B., is it your sense, then, in an unlikely scenario like that? I mean, you could use, in the case we've had split government, it's been very good for the markets as well. So it's not a negative uh, for the markets, is it? No, not at all. I think the market has kind of factored the news in, to be honest with you. I, I, I guess I could agree with Melissa. Any uh, surprise is going to be to the upside with, uh, um, you know, the Republicans keeping total control of Congress. I think they factored in now, the market has, that they're going to lose right. the House. And so be it. I th I'm with Melissa. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm extremely bullish, but I'm bullish because of all the earnings I see coming out and all the innovation. So you still strongly the dislike US. Gasparino, is what you're saying. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say strongly, but I would go with dislike, yes. I'm kidding. Uh, by the way, I'd be careful about the next two years. Right. Just, just say. No, I know Listen, I said I the Dow was going to go to 27,000. It almost years. got there. It's going to get there. Guys, thank you all very, very much. <laughs> Can you imagine right. if, if Abraham Lincoln had to worry about a stock market? Uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin on that and so much more at play going into this crucial weekend after this.